everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, and today live, I'm going to show you guys how to paint this image of red going into the woods. It's a little red riding hood, full acrylic painting tutorial, live streaming on the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. John is going to be tracking me with one of many cameras, just making sure you can see every part of the color mixing, every part of everything I'm doing, so you can paint this for yourself at home. That is the whole point of this. If you check the description below, uh, there's a list of materials, some paint exchanges if you need to make one, which of course I'll talk about in the lesson, and a link to the website where you can get a traceable if drawing is not your thing, and the reference image, and plus the blow up of the reference image so you guys can have a better painting experience in your own art studio. I hope everyone is good today. Oh yeah, everyone's very good. We're already way past shirt, but they're really excited to be here. We're well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> So yeah, no. I love a Sunday paint. Yeah, you no, know, we've got over 330, 340, it's 350. It's just uh, lots of folks coming here. They're really Come excited. Come on in, everybody's welcome. So we're, we're doing some. We're doing a fun painting today. We are, and um, this is one you can make bigger. Uh, I chose to teach it today on a nine by twelve canvas board, so I could show you a little more of the detail. Some of the things I know you're hoping to learn today. I wanted to make sure I had a chance to teach you some of those things. Um, on here we have wishes for Laura and her family. Um, they're dealing with the loss of a daughter and a granddaughter, and they just need strength, love, and hope. And a wish for Tammy's mom to be okay and have good healers and strength for the family. Mm. So those are my wishes on my canvas today. Want to check out the paint? Yeah. Let's go palette cam. All right. So here in the palette cam, I have burnt umber. Indian yellow, I have the um, fluid black paint. I've got a little glazing liquid, right? It doesn't matter if it's satin or gloss or matte. That's just your preference of the finish. I have titanium white and I have zinc white. So that's what I have here. And then also it's not out on the palette yet. I'm gonna be using CAD red medium for reds red. Hmm. That's gonna be her thing. Now you could exchange if you just don't have any Indian yellow and you can't get any, you could exchange yellow ochre. I really, really recommend getting some mixing white or zinc white. And I looked, you know, Galleria Acrylic has this. System 3 has this. So there's some economic options out there. You guys aren't trapped with, I like painting with what I paint with, but you guys have options just, you know, in both this color and this color. I went and did some research to make sure ahead of time. <laughs> so hopefully everybody's ready and they have everything they need, and they're all set up to be comfortable and relaxed and paint along. Yes, it would seem so. They're still they're still coming in. They're still piling in here. So everyone's really excited to do this. I'm excited. I've I, had a lot of coffee. Yeah, and it seems like I, you know, I've had a couple cups myself. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> you know, there's, but there, it seems like there's a, a bunch of people here that are ready to, in various states of paint along to watch along, and uh, they're ready. However you want to art. Mm -hmm. If it's in your imagination, that's as valid as on the canvas because really you got to create it here first before you put it anywhere else. So it's all good. I'm going to start putting this little sucker in. I have a short handled number 26 bright here. It's a ruby satin. It's just what I'm using today. I'm going to get this wet, drag off the extra water, and I'm going to start working on my little kind of keyhole glow here that's happening. The first thing I have to get on this canvas is the glow. So I'm going to take out a little of my Indian yellow, which is already pretty transparent. And I'm going to tone it with my burnt umber. And just the smidgiest smidge. And boy, am I going to sneak in. Look how little that is. Can you even see how small? Mm -hmm. Of the black. See, look, it really colors it. It just takes, you got to be so careful with that black paint when you're trying to just to uh, shade something with it. So I've got that pretty thoroughly mixed on my brush. I'm gonna get some glazing medium and I'm gonna start putting in the keyhole of light. I'm actually gonna add a little of my zinc white to it to make it creamier so it's even more keyhole -y. There we go. That creamy keyhole that we've got going on here. Just brushing back and forth. Brushing, brushing, brushing. So on this painting, you know, I was like looking at like what kind of yellows did I want to use? How did I want to get this kind of dramatic forest in? Um, there were a lot of options and choices for the painting. 
And I just went for the ones that I thought were going to give me the most kind of fairy tale romantic effect. Now I'm brushing this light, right? Kind of in the center. So I have it to work from. I'm going to blend this out a lot, but I find that it's easier if I start with this in the center. And before I do anything else, I'm going to come get a little more of my zinc white. And I'm going to make sure that I'm making this brighter right in here. Might even have to get into my titanium to get really powerful into that, into that white. A little more yellow into it and some glaze. There we go. Just keep lightening it up. Now, as I'm going around, I'm going to make up a little more of my base color, which is the burnt umber and the Indian yellow and just the titchiest titch of black. Get my glaze. So I've got this little keyhole here and it starts to get darker here and grayer to the outer edges. And I'm going to kind of curve my brush stroke and I'm softly brushing this over and blending this in. I've shown a lot of different ways of getting this. So I'm kind of excited to show a different way of getting here. One that I really like. That I think is very effective and romantic. Brushing this in softly, blending. Now the focus of my brightest light is right about here. So that's what I've got to keep the brightest. Okay, that you've got to let me know you're coming over or something. You have to stop sneaking in. Or I'm going to end up screaming in everybody's ear. It's going to it be one of those moments no, where you scare. Hey, no. We're, we're, he <laughs> everybody knows gets a surprise. He knows how easily I startle. <laughs> I try to try to let her know that I'm sneaking up behind her by, by tapping her on the shoulder. But see, that doesn't seem to be any better. You know? Because <laughs> then it's just a surprise tapping from the back. No, I mean like in the mic. Say, I'm going to come over and adjust your mic. Make an announcement. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, so then that the whole the whole stealthiness loses its purpose. Yeah, I'm not enjoying no. the stealthiness. I have to tell you, I adore <laughs> you, but the stealthiness is freaking me out. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get this first coat here of this kind of glow color. Getting a little darker as I go out. Just lightly blending. And we are going to be doing a lot of trees today. But the good news is, is we're going to talk a lot about being successful at painting trees. Yeah. So that's going to be a good takeaway. Let's just make sure I'm getting this canvas coated. Sometimes with these canvases, you've just got to get them coated. Yeah. So that they'll take the paint. I'll flip this over. That's, is that kind of what you're doing there is just putting some paint down? Yeah, I'm getting this first layer of glow. And then I'm going to exacerbate the glow. It's going to be brown down here so I can get much browner at my ground level. And we're going to dry it and then come back again and get some drama. Drama. Drama on my canvas. Very dramatic. It'll be super, super fun. Lost my tape, John. You lost you lost what? My tape. So Your you tape. notice that I'm kind of my brush strokes are going around. What I'm really trying to do is create this basis, this sort of and we'll have to come back. Make sure we've got this keyhole, which is right here again. So let's dry our canvas, right? 
And what's great about this is if you're running student paints, this will really work really well for you. All right. Let's see. That's why she's doing that. Oh, oh there we go. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. I didn't uh, quite expect her just to jump off like that. But, whoa, do I always say there's a whole bunch of you guys here today. So, thank you for coming and hanging out. Um... Man, this is a uh, this is another one of those cool paintings that uh, I love that Cinnamon does, where she uh, takes us into her sort of uh, romantic storytale universe. And um, I'm really I really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us and painting this today. So uh, I've enjoyed seeing all of the paintings that have been coming up here. Um, I'll bring Cinnamon back on. Whoop, there you go. And uh, I was just saying thank you to everybody, of course, for coming hang out. Always. Yeah. We have we have over 450 people here with us hanging out already. Well, hopefully I, we have at least a few col colored grounds kind of brushed in in this sort of goldy brown. Yeah. Hopefully we do. Oh, good. We're going to sketch in a little bit of the placement of everything. So about my hand, I would say this is about three, four inches over here on the left. Coming down at a slight slope, right, is the ground, is the, is the basis of this forest before we start to lose the land, right? And then if you look at where red is in relationship to it the focus whatever the sun is that's shining through the trees is mostly focused kind of right here at its highest point it comes down a little bit but it doesn't go much up past this all right so knowing that we can start to sort of rush in and paint in that reality before we start putting in our trees yeah so many 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 trees <laughs> That you guys clearly want to paint so many <laughs> trees. So now I'm going to pull out, whether you're using the yellow ochre or the Indian yellow, I'm going to pull out my Indian yellow. I'm going to get a smidge of just the black. And I'm graying it, just graying it, but I'm not warming it with the brown. Now I'm going to get a serious amount of white on my brush. There you go. Mm. So a lot of people don't know this, but uh, there's tons and tons of painters that use black to make a green in landscapes. Oh, yeah. I'm just brushing this on over my base. By having this sort of glowing base, you could also do like a gold gesso or a bunch of crazy stuff to get this effect. But by having this glowing base, it's going to give my um, paint like a lot of that yellow glow through. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just brushing this on softly. Cheryl asked a question here. Um, when you're getting into the trees here, mm -hmm. could you discuss ways to get away from cloning the trees? Yes. She she was uh one, it was one of the big reasons why she wanted to tune in and see this one. And I imagine there are lots of the people <laughs> who are in that same boat. So I'm guessing that she watches my mom since she said cloning. <laughs> Don't clone anything. <laughs> She's so anti-clone. I mean, you'd think the woman never saw Star Wars. Man, clones have a purpose. So uh, <laughs> Tammy was asking, do you seal the canvas when you're done? Um, When I'm painting for myself, yeah, I do varnish. Let's get a little more white on our brush. <laughs> and by that she means uh, we do varnish every every painting in the studio just... Some because we we let them sometimes cure. It takes it, a while. Yeah, sometimes it may be like you know a couple weeks afterwards, which I mean in truth probably isn't the worst practice to let them fully cure, but it's out of <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say laziness as much as like we don't have enough time to just varnish everything in a good process yet. So I'm just continuing to very slowly with my brush, which hasn't been rinsed, make sure that I've got this focal point of light. Right, that's going to be real key. I have to have it soft. There's nothing like pointed, right? It's quite bright. Uh, when you print out the black and white of that, you're like, it's surprising how uh, bright it actually is. Hmm. I was like, man, you know, sometimes color fools you. I notice how I'm randomizing my brush strokes here so that there's not a particular edge to focus on. Yeah. So even though. I think I've got one more I gotta do. Oh my gosh, guys. There we go. It's just gotta be bright. But not obviously white. It has to have that yellow sort of tinted through it. I think we got it. Now I've got that. That's done. 
Yay. <laughs> I'm going to put out a little more of my Indian yellow because I go through it really quickly. No. Oh, there's the other. Is uh, that no? Simone was asking. Hi, Simone. It, it, could she have started out with uh, dark camp, you know, dark edges, and worked uh, worked her way in, as well as doing it all yellow? Um. So here's my experience with that. Um, this extra step really helps me get this successful thing. Yes, you can darken your edges and then come in lighter and lighter and lighter. It seems harder. It's not impossible, and some people prefer to do it the way you described. To get the keyhole that way, this is just the way I'm sure I'm going to have a luminous forest, so I'm going for it this way. But there's not just one way to paint anything. So if you're like, man, I can't do it this reverse way, yeah, do it the way that you can do it. The best paint technique is the one that you can use. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, right? And there's just never one way to get a painting done. I'm going to sneak back up into my black. Sneakies. No, Tammy, Tammy asked, which white were you using there in the center? So I have, um, this is glazing medium right here. That's going to slow down the drying time on my paint. Let me glaze. This is titanium white. And I have zinc uh, white, or you could use mixing white. Either one is fine. You just need this bright transparency that doesn't cream the color, but lightens it a shade. Oh, I, I think Very she, helpful. she meant, what, what color were you using in the center of the keyhole there? Oh, the center of the keyhole is just the Indian yellow. And a smidge of the black and a lot of the titanium white. Titanium white. Okay. Now I'm coming here and I'm, I don't have to worry about painting below this little line I've got, right? Because I made my landscape and I know. Mm -hmm. And see already it's just easy to lose a little bit of that keyhole. It's just you encroach and then all of a sudden you're like, where did it go? So that's just my, you know, that's just my experience. Mm -hmm. Getting that soft blend there. Coming in. All right, here we're going. So the yellow, smidge of the black, a little more this time. You can have a smidge of the white, that's okay. Some glaze. And this weird green tone is gonna start to happen. I'm just darkening this as I'm coming out. I'm bringing this around. Making sure I've got a nice blend because I just need soft, 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 soft everything. Here. And that's the other place that zinc will help me because acrylic wants to have very hard edges. What it wants to do, you can blend it wet into wet, but what it wants is to have very hard edges. So if you're having problems with that, zinc is another one of those tools that can really help you with that struggle. Okay. Ooh, a lot more black this time. A smidge of the white. There we go. Now, because I have a underpainting, because I have this acrylic ground, I don't have uh, the streaky white canvas showing through, which I like. Blending, blending, blending softly using one brush. And then I might come in just a little bit at this angle here, see? And feather it in. Now, do you find that there is a like uh, a a a typical number of layers that you have to a painting, or like is there like a minimum number you need before it's <laughs> for good? the way I paint? I need about three layers. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to paint in the very immediate expressive method, um, you might only need two because you just do a uh, ground, you know, mm -hmm. and then quick, 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 quick hit hit all your values. Mm -hmm. Not my best skill. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a sneak up on my painting gal. I need a minute to get to know the canvas. Think about it. Now, also, a lot of times you may be approaching the the 
the painting of the canvas in a way that may seem unintuitive because you're also trying to think about how people's products may be performing. Yeah. And and so it may be unintuitive to, you know, say paint an area white or black first, but that helps the painting of the of the subsequent colors. Well, and it, it you know, um, so I think, you know, about what people are painting with and they paint with anything from, you know, acrylic student paint to uh, tempera. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that paint with tempera that watch. And so I try to think about the limitations of those paints and just be aware of that when I'm planning a project as well. Yeah. So I'm getting there. I'm starting to have a very bright little keyhole happening. Mm-hmm. See, oh, and, you, and, and see how you scooted your canvas right over there? Mm-hmm. I told you you would. Yeah, I'm rinsing <laughs> out. So weirdly I can restart and I'm going to do an interesting thing here. I'm going to treat myself. If you have it, you can do this. I'm going to treat myself to my zinc. Now, Tammy was saying uh, hers isn't coming out as green. Um, does she need to use more black? Uh, she needs to use more yellow. She needs to use more yellow. Mm-hmm. And the, and the white. Okay. Yeah, she was asking, do I need to use more black? But no, you need I'm to use more yellow. I'm just letting the zinc, because it's so transparent. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. I know. It's a lot of work for the center of a canvas. Forest doesn't grow in a day. (laughs) And you can see this is, you know, one of those unique colors, like it just blends right in and just vanishes into it. So I may not have oil paints, and that's cool because I've got zinc. And it will soften my edges for sure. I'm going to take this down a little bit. And I'm getting real happy with that. So see how my brush stroke is rounded? And this is a glaze. It's very transparent. So it's like a milky fog going on over everything. If all I had was titanium white, right, it wouldn't work the same, but I can take a little bit of my titanium and gel medium, glazing medium, and make a more transparent white. And you can see it's not quite the same. It's definitely got a lot more pigment in, in my zinc, but at least it's something, right? Mm-hmm. And if I were like stuck outside plain air painting and I didn't have any zinc and all I had was titanium white and some gel, I would make it work. It's just going to be like a little more of that streaky. You can see how it's different. Yeah. But I just want to show that to you so you know what it does. Now, last thing. This is pretty gray up here. It's pretty gray at the corner. So now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to pull out some of my black and some of my white. And I'm going to make the gray value I'm looking at. It says my black and my white. But I'm going to add a smidge of yellow to it. Just a smidge. A glazing medium. I'm going to very softly make sure that this is grayed and darker. And the reason I'm taking the time to make this keyhole work is I'm going to do a lot of these branches, but there's an infinite number of branches here. This person photoshopped in, and if I made you paint all of them, you would never get to go home. We're going to paint nearly all of them, (laughs) (laughs) but we have to, you know, stop at some point. Let's see how we've got this. This whole prep is going to save us hours in trying to make that deeper value through just branches. More glaze. Sometimes if stuff isn't uh, blending, the glaze can really help if you can get it. When we're doing acrylic paintings, that is often secret spice of it all. I'm picking up more of my gray. I'm pulling it down here. I'll let it curl in a little bit because it just does. A little more glaze. Blendy, blendy, blendy. See, the pigment on the black and the titanium white is pretty powerful. 
And it's really nice when the painting underneath shows through. Painting this. All right, so we've got that. Now we're going to get our lower part of our canvas. I, didn't I put burnt sienna on the list? Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll we'll have to start with burnt umber, but I think I had burnt sienna on the list. Now this part, I'm actually going to bring my landscape down. I'm going to start with just this color because it just needs a, a little basis of this paint. And John's going to look up if I have burnt, burnt sienna on my list. Oh, I'll see if I look right here. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Burnt sienna. I see it. And burnt umber. Okay, I just forgot to put it out. Like, where's my burnt sienna? I'm feeling so exposed. Don't need it yet. Sometimes my materials list is for me too. This is brighter here. So even though this is the underpainting for our forest floor, that I'm putting in, noticing I'm like kind of leaving that there. I'll just feather this in. And then I'm going to get some of my Indian yellow. I think if I have to. And come here in the center and just make sure that there is a highlight that sort of shows here. Later I'll be putting like these little brush strokes in. I was like, let me in. <laughs> but right now I just want to get this part kind of talked about. See, I'm going back and forth. It's a highlight. I'm wider on my brush stroke here. Narrowing on my brush stroke there. I'm going to soften this edge between the edge of the woods and that. In fact, you might pull out some burnt umber and some zinc if you have it. Go ahead and yellow so we have some of the color. And I'm going to come to this edge. Blend in just a smidge. Because things get out of focus in the distance. See how I'm at putting them out of focus? Mm-hmm. I'm not putting in any of my leaf texture yet. I like that this painting, I like I like paintings that have a simple chromatic field. Because they are much more functional to do. Now I'm going to take a little of my black and a little of my umber. Oh yeah, I keep, I keep forgetting to ask because we keep getting I keep getting distracted by other conversations here in in chat. Uh, mm. uh, how many hoots do you think this painting is? I think it's technically a two hoot. Um, it may feel like a three hoot for some people because of the number of trees. Ah, the tediousness of getting those trees not to clone. That is, yeah, this painting is meditative, but it is longer because there's a lot of trees. Hmm. You know, we're not just painting one happy little tree here. We got a lot. So I'm kind of at an angle. I'm feathering this down to also, ex you know, accentuate this kind of keyhole that we have happening here. I'm feathering it up. Really light brush stroke. And it's also kind of in this scoop shape. I'm not coming straight across. I'm leaving this sort of open. And then across the, the bottom of it, deepening it, brush softly. Now, we have that happening here. Make sure I've got all of my canvas kind of. I'm going to grab a little of this and my glaze. And I'm going to come here at the corners, just softly up here. 
It's, you see a lot of what's underneath. Mm-hmm. Gonna help me later. So by now, I should start to be seeing like this sort of foundation that you would find in the forest. So Anne asks, what's a hoot rating? <laughs> <laughs> so when we used to try to describe how hard um, a painting was going to be for um, somebody. And that there. Um, I, I started out on YouTube painting a lot of owls. So I would say that something was one hoot <laughs> if it was super easy. <laughs> Two hoots. If it was, you know, still for beginners, but was maybe a little more challenging than the one hoots. And then three hoots is for confident beginners. You know, you still need the full tutorial. You still need the brushstroke guidance, but you're ready to put together some challenging um, techniques. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm liking that. This well, right like now is a very cool, key, like it's, you've definitely got the drama. The drama. The drama. Can you grab some burnt sienna for me? I'm so sorry. I'm going to brush on Wait, some second. zinc. I'm looking just to make sure I don't have any yeah. overly bright areas. I want everything to be a little bit foggy. I'll make sure that there's a little yellow in my zinky fog. <laughs> we all need some zinky fog. Burnt sienna. I just want to make sure that this isn't too much right here. A little bit yellow. So that's the thing you want to check for is you don't want any bright banding. There we go. And again, don't feel like this is a material you can't get. A lot of the student lines carry it. You know? And so it's out there. Especially uh, what's called um, economy pro paints. So they're just a little bit above the student paints, but not much, like a dollar or two dollars. And sometimes they'll have these colors. So you don't necessarily have to get into the. Mm hmm. Because it is slanted. She's on the side of a hill. Mm hmm Yeah. There's a slanty little hill happening here. Did I get my burn? Yay! <laughs> the studio gnomes absolutely did bring them to me. And the thing I really want to do is I want to make sure that there's kind of like a, like a f distant fog back here at this line. Because I don't want there to be a hard line between this and this before I start putting in my trees. I'm going to take a little of my... Indian yellow and a little of my black. Right. And then some of my zinc white. Oops. I forgot to turn my microphone on. You forgot to turn your mic on? Oops. Sorry, guys. I'm going to just make sure. I want this to be a dark, distant space. Blazing me. There we go. I just gotten too light of a color. Just want to make sure that this is soft. It's going to be there, but we just don't want it to be an obvious thing. If that makes sense to everybody. That's an edge you want to soften. And you do that by just blurring. You want it to be there, blur the lines. And I'm just dry brushing that. So it's soft brush. I mean, this paint isn't wet anymore, but I'm using. The transparency, the titanium, and a little bit of the glazing, and that's going to let it be a little bit transparent, and so that can soften that edge. Now, Tammy wanted to know what it, what that glazing medium is being used for there. So, so the glazing medium for me does a lot in acrylic paint, um, and I totally have gotten so many of my artist friends <laughs> like hooked on it. It's this particular product, this exact one, slows the drawing time down lets you do tints. So see how that's super transparent there? Yeah. Usually it would have to have one product to do that and another product to slow down drying. This one is both of them. Yeah, she's using gloss. 
Um, yeah, you can use gloss, you can use satin, you can use matte. That is just about the finish that you're looking to have. Mm. Okay, so I feel like I've softened that. I know where the edge is, but it's it's soft. That's what I want, is soft. I'm going to get my burnt umber, which is super psychotic bright today. What the heck? That's such a bright burnt umber, and I'm not going to have none of that. I'm going to take a little black, and I'm going to burn it up. Look at that. Well, that isn't so saturated. might even add some umber in there. It just needs to be a warmer, 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 and I'm going to start kind of dashing in this floor texture. See? And you can kind of see where she it comes back. There's like this little light that comes back. So the stroke is short and back and forth. See, I'm going back and forth. And a lot of my canvas underneath is showing. I want that. I want that very much. Because this is all this like deadfall and leaves and everything on this canvas. I want it. Right, so a little zinc in here. See how zinc lets my color be the same, but lightens it a little. Yeah. Without making it super creamy, that's the thing that I like about it. Now let me let me just clarify uh, what you were saying earlier about the the glazing mediums. Mm -hmm. Different brands do different things. Yes, different brands do different things. Now they both may glaze, but one may also slow things down or speed things up. Yeah. So you right. should experiment with them. And read the bottle because it'll tell you. Okay. It'll be like this is for trans. Like if it says dries fast, thin transparency, mm -hmm. that is not the product. You it wants to slow the drying drying time down. Yeah. Shit. So that's what you're looking for and a glaze. Yeah, so Tammy's using the same thing you are. She's just using the, the gloss instead Ooh. of the, the satin. Gloss is usually my preference, but I got the satin. Yeah. It just, it happened to me. It ha Satin happened. Satin happened. I'm going to get my Indian yellow and my burnt umber. Not my burnt umber, my burnt sienna. I'm going to just make sure that right here... You have to use that glazing medium um, in each stroke like you would water, or is it, because it seems really watery to some people. Um, sometimes I use it in place of water. Yeah? Because, it, you know, again, I appreciate that my paint doesn't slow down. I appreciate that I can blend it. These are just qualities I really enjoy about it. A little more ember on my brush. Little, uh, see how I'm dry brushing, how it's like little soft strokes, yeah. and I'm just kissing the canvas. Corner of my brush. Just making sure that that is. Well, actually, that's got to get darker there. I've got a little bright. And if that happens, if you take your bright down too far, and you lose your keyhole, that's okay. You just come back with this darker color. Look. Hmm. Just blend them into each other. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. And there's some stuff I don't have to worry about because I got a big tree here. There's just like literally no point in worrying about where this big tree is. I'm going to sip my coffee before I start putting in all these trees. Well, gosh, we've had such a wonderful so crowd of people here. And Nevis, by the way, says she you're wearing her favorite necklace. This is one of my favorites too. I love Betsy Johnson. She's really good. Yeah, her her uh, her her uh, little icon is a, is a butterfly. She has a I think it's a monarch butterfly because it's the oh, orange gosh, and black butterflies. So, yeah, always good news. I can see why it's her favorite. <laughs> she's she's kindred spirit of necklaces. She's a kindred spirit of necklaces. Yeah. So I'm going to put in these distant trees, and the trick to the trees being distant is that they will be a slightly darker shade than the background. That's mm -hmm. how we're going to push them back. Um, sometimes people paint in the trees and then glaze over them with, like, zinc to lighten them, but we're going to try to just mix a color that's close enough to this background 
that the tree starts to vanish into it. And then as they come forward, they become darker. Mm -hmm. We have to leave this little spot right here as a place for red to be standing. And then we're going to come here with these giant oaks and come up. Now, one of the things we're going to have to have up here is lots of little branches. And they're going to be layering on each other. This person went cray cray with their Photoshop. Yeah. Like bananas. We're going to be pretty bananas, but we're going to be normal human bananas. Gotcha. And then when we go to paint in her cloak, I've given you guys this uh, source material so you can see the highlights and colors. The little zoomy zoom. Right. So on top of the traceable, there's that. You can really tell how it was shopped in there. Mm -hmm. You can get right in there and see it. Trying to decide what I want to paint my trees in with. And I'm going to go with, right now, off the top of my head, I don't a know. number four round. A number four round. We'll see how that goes. If it doesn't go well, I'm going to do a, um, a, uh, a angle. So I'm going to take a little of my black over to my yellow. And get some of my titanium white. A little more black than that. Not much, man. These have to be close, and we're going to see how they tree. So if I come right through the center, that would be, you know, a lot. I want to test my tree right here. And I'm going to have this distant fine. I'm dipping in the water. Here's a trick. On this, I'm going to mist it so that I have enough water to do my fine lines. I've got a nice firm brush, it's well loaded, and it's going to come up. And we're going to make a distant little line. I have another little friend right here. Now, these brush strokes can be brushy. That'll actually be okay. I'm going to put some on this side as well. Just make sure you plant it firmer at the beginning. And then as you're traveling up the canvas all the way up to the top, you know, you just want to make sure that you're lightening it so that the base of the tree is a little bit uh, wider than the top. Oh, see, there we go. We're, we're making distant trees. I'm going to mist. It is hard sometimes to bring water from your glass to your paint. Let's do some little fine ones here that we can't really see all that well. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get right into the zinc if you need to come in with some even lighter ones. As we come into the center, that's what I'm inclined to do. Because then they're, I'm just bringing them up, just little distant trunks. And then I'll be careful, I'll think about how I planted these. More zinc, get some glaze so I'm not biting it. And I'm going to need to miss this. Lines are about the tip of your brush, the smoothness of the canvas, the amount of paint on it, and the amount of fluidity your paint has. So if all those things are going well, you'll be able to make these nice little lines. If they're not, you're going to be like, I'm just going to take me forever to paint this one little tree. So the firmest pressure is at the beginning of the stroke. It lightens as I go up the canvas. It's okay on these distant trees if they kind of come in and out of view. Because if you'll notice the reference photo, they kind of do. Now, cloning. So mm. what you want to do is you want to make sure some of your trees are thick. Some of your trees are thin. You want to make sure that maybe some of them go a different direction than others. Right? They are kind of similar, but cluster some of them close together, disperse some of them further apart. That's the trick.
right yet until we get to the middle range of trees we don't have to worry about branches soon we will though we'll be super worried about branches Alrighty. now remember you got to keep this area sort of right in this zone mm -hmm. pep for her now i'm going to get back into my dark color and add maybe a smidge more of gray Easier to add it in than take it out, so something to think about. I'm going to start coming here. These are darker. Hmm. Put these down. Pressing. So many trees. I hope you guys are ready for all the tree. Let's do a nice little tree right next to this one. Super distant. Brush stroke is light. It's like a twin. Then maybe up here it differs. Just keep those little trees a coming. One of my tricks when I'm designing. And I'm trying to prevent what's called cloning, which is to repeat the same object again and again. Is I sketch things out a little bit. That can really help me. Now I'm going to get a little more black in there. Right, because we're, it's darker here, isn't it? So even the shade of the trees that we're putting in reflects this keyhole that we have going on. And that's all you're doing is you're making sure you've got a nice reflection that the keyhole, the darker, darker, lighter. A lot of these trees, what I'll say about this corner here is don't work it too hard because you have this big giant tree right here. You need them there to be this distant sort of layering. Throw a little guy out here. See, I'm going over to the right of this darker little tree. As it's coming forward. We could have a little branch. Starting to maybe see branches. Alright. So I know I'm going to have this big monstrous tree right there. No point in painting it. I may know it's there. But there's just no point. I'll roll off and get more yellow again. And some of my titanium. Because we're back to the mid trees doing the same thing this other direction, right? And again, this whole section right here has this big honking tree. So there's keep that in mind when you're trying to decide how many trees you're going to want to have. Just keep making these little lines. Coming up. Make it darker. Get ruby gloomy. <laughs> so, another thing I don't know if you can see it that happens is sometimes my brush gets twirled as I'm going up. Because I'll notice as I'm traveling up that I don't have enough pigment, but I know the back side of my brush has pigment. And I'm not sure it's something that's super obvious. And what's going on. Adding some more black. Maybe too much. Back into the yellow. So these are darker. We need these distant, far off ones, right? Building up the forest with my friends. Mm -hmm. You're so quiet. Just watching things. I, you know, this is a really, this is a really nice forest one. I've, I, I, I love these romanticized forest paintings Me that too. you do. 
And, you know, this one, you know, this particular one, especially with the cloning and the trees and the forest, this is just a really good technique that, I mean, clearly a lot of people have tuned in here to see today. So yeah. I, uh, I've i been watching the chat here, questions, and just trying to make sure I get all those captured in here for you. How are those doing? Good. Good. We have a really great community here who's been really supportive of each other. So, uh, you know. I love that. That I think more than anything, the way the community supports each other is super important. Get my yellow in there. It's darker. A smidge of the, the white. It's grayed. No point in going too far over here, but you know, I still have to have trees back here. So see how they're kind of a mess? Mm. We want that. Maybe I kind of partially see one here and it's not, you know, maybe I come over here and partially see one here. But I got a big tree, so I got to think about that. Now, this is me and I'm going to do this. What is you? I'm going to take a bristle brush. You could take a cloud. You could take a bristle, whatever you want to do. I'm going to grab a little zinc. I'm going to get a little of this gray color on it that I've been mixing. And then a lot more zinc. I'm going to do this thing at the base of my trees. See what I'm doing? I don't want it to be gray. I don't want it to be a bright fog. It needs to be a gray fog because it's far away. It's distant. This is going to make this thing so cool. So I'm just putting a little fog. See, I'm wiggling the brush back and forth on the corner. I come up here and do some of that too. On another side, so it's just scrubbing back and forth with this grayed fog. Look at that. Mm hmm. Bring some up. So this is like painting low clouds. Don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you might be painting low clouds, don't panic. Isn't that lovely? That already should be helping soften. Now in the center here, I can get more into, you know, the zinc in the fog because you know this is where the light is the rest of it needs to be a very grayed one check that is that not awesome yeah so now we've got some branches we've got some stuff happening you know you want to check in your center make sure that you've got enough of the bright light trees that you need to have So, uh, are you up for uh, some philosophical questions? I'm up for some philosophical questions. I'm going to be adding some more uh, in the light trees here in the center. I want to make sure that the this area has got some stuff. So, Afsha asks, uh, how do we deal with times when we, when we uh, badly want to paint but feel unsatisfied with every reference paint picture or subject that we find worse than art block like you're unsatisfied with all your reference material you just can't find that thing to paint well um i do get that and i often say to myself uh when i'm talking to myself which is a thing that i do i'm not recommending it for mental health I do it. I talk to myself. We have footage of this. I We have footage of it. Um, Sometimes very good one footage. One of the biggest time sucks uh, to stop you from painting is deciding what to paint. It happens to me. It happens to every artist I know. Um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you ever give yourself a daily painting challenge, right, where you're like, I'm just going to paint something every day, and you get there and you do it, and you stop taking the subject out of it. It's not the subject that matters anymore. It's the painting, the act of painting that matters. Mm. values highlights you know it's a couple eggs on a white plate how would you paint it yeah then yeah then just make the act of painting the exercise and not mm -hmm. the act of accomplishment i gotta give myself my first layer of weird little branches up here all right i'm not gonna have enough little branches it's little branch time 
Here so on the Sherpa Show. Here's my thing. I get myself this. I have some economy choices for you guys. Uh, I really love this product, which is the Golden Fluid Paint. Um, but you know, Liquitex makes a soft bodied. Um, you can sometimes use craft paints. So there's a lot of ways to get there. I'm gonna take a little of this over here. To my yellow, maybe a yellow a bit of my yellow over here. And what I'll say about that is, is that it makes branches and trees bearable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm making a mid-gray that you can kind of see, and I roll my brush off. I could have mixed it with a palette knife. Also would work. Hmm. But I'm going to come up here and start putting in these little wandering branches. This is really like a Zen doodle. We wander out. Maybe that one goes out and down. Oh, but its little friend goes up. Really, as long as you, you, you're prolific with them and you go long, it's not like you're going to get them wrong. And this is a good time to practice. Branches break out and they get away from each other and they cross in front of each other. That's the other thing. In this space, you get to cross branches in front of each other. So this is a mid yellow gray. And we need to have these, my brush pressure is super light. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be through here. They're gonna come down, not really past this in any capacity. And they're gonna be heaviest right here. And we're gonna just do as many of these as we can stand. Maybe this one will come up and it'll be on a thicker branch. Definitely vary the thickness of your branches so that it feels more brambly. Mm -hmm. You're going to have so many trees through here. You don't even have to really worry about where these branches are actually coming from, interestingly enough. You just need to worry that you're making them. So yeah. see how that's kind of coming in? Lots of branches. And, you know, make sure you have little fine hairs. So I'm just using just the edge of my little brush. Take some of these down, break them. That's what they'll do. Little soft lines. See? See, see, Bugsy <laughs> Seagull says see. It's not cute. I've been told that. <laughs> have you? Yes. Oh. I have actually been actively. I'm going to bring a, a thicker branch right here. Look at that. I'm pressing down. He wanders down. He breaks up. My brush is sort of twirling as I'm coming along. It's a thicker branch. So that's the thing is like I could have done infinite number of these little twigs, but then I wouldn't have the variance that I need for something to feel like I'm painting nature. Now, he, I don't even have to worry what's happening over here because there's a bunch of trees and stuff over here. So this, that can just stop there. This is sort of fun because you have disembodied tree branches hmm. coming from who knows where. They add drama. They do. It lets you know that this is a kind of scary forest. Mm -hmm. Just break down. I love getting into these weird little thickets with it. We need to have a layer of this if we're going to have a layer of anything else for it to feel like it has depth. Yeah. There's just no way to get the depth without doing this. I get to come the other way. Bring some craziness from over here. Now, I might have to bring it from a little further over here. Just because our other tree is not as big. But already, you can see how that tree branch stuff is happening. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe that one's a little thicker. Some of these can be fine little branches. Just is really about making lots of little little twiggles that wander. Okay, light light strokes and down strokes and a little black in there. Lots to do. And these will help the branches that we're going to put in later, the black ones that are really hyper detailed. It will make them feel so much more involved. Sometimes when you're new and you're looking at a painting and you see all this, you, you correctly assume that you have a lot to do because there is certainly a lot to do. Look, I'm a branch out here. I'm just filling this in. So Tammy would like to know, how do you keep the branches fine with a thick brush? With a thick brush? Yeah, because you're using a really thick brush. This is a thick brush. This is not a thick brush. <laughs> I know it looks like it. So this brush, which is my number four round, has a really intense point on it. So all I have to do is thin my paint and lighten my pressure to get this line. Gotcha. Um, there are brushes this size that would give me big clunky tree trunks and big results. but This one won't do that. Um, there are, you know, if I was in another line, I might have to get down into this size to get the same point, which is, this right. I'm going to pull this out because that's a really good point. So, huh. so this is really about, you know, um, I, uh, in the brush store and I, this is not probably not good for your health. I rub brushes on the tip of my tongue to see how sharp the point is. Yep. That's that happens. <laughs> Do brush stores appreciate it? I, no, they don't. I don't even know what to think about that. You, it's just, you're not around. You don't know. <laughs> well, I do now. <laughs> I don't have the kids. I'm not a bad example. You, could, you, uh, could, you, could you inch your, uh, your canvas over there to your uh, left? There you go. Perfect. Ah, thanks. I'm just trying to make sure that there's just a lot of texture here um, to layer my next layer of trees on. Yeah. Oh, that's a little dark. It doesn't matter though, because like there's going to be dark branches coming soon. So this this might be a shade darker, and again, mist so that there's water. But that's what it is. Like sometimes you'll see somebody painting a tool, and you're like, "How's the tool doing that?" Chances are, it's a real specific tool that's engineered to do it that way. Gotcha. Because you're right, thick brushes might not give you a very good fine line. There are some other people admitting to having done that similar thing. Yeah, that's how you know. Mm hmm I mouth my stuff. I don't mouth cadmium, but, you know. Just saying, all you people now know. <laughs> you may be knowing each other more than you know you know each other with your brushes. So true. So just lots of little branches coming down and, and being busy. And you can kind of see this is super busy now. Mm. Right? Next grouping of trees will start coming up. All right, we're going to grow another grouping of trees. Hmm. This will be a darker tree. So I'm going to take a little of the black over to my yellow. But this is a darker, more robust tree. Smidge of my white. And let's plant some more trees. Again... Right now, trees that are closer to her will always, I'm mean not her, but this yellow will always be more yellow. So I like to begin on the outside edges just in case I've mixed a darker color than what I'd want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to plant this little guy. I'm going to give him a little ground here. See, I'm going like that, a little ground before I grow him up because he's, he's more visible. He'll wander to the left, break up. I like to give my trees some personality. My trees don't grow straight. Let's give him a weird little branch that comes out too. And come up here, you can add branches to the branches, right? Mm-hmm. 
You can add branches. I don't know why my hands on my hip. You can add branches to the branches. <laughs> you're you're in your Wonder Woman pose. I'm sorry. Wonder this Woman. is well. I'm not actually. I'm glad this isn't a speed paint because there's no real way to show you guys this in a speed paint. Otherwise, you would have no idea how much is involved in painting this kind of forest, which I think a lot of people have wanted to paint for a while. Mm -hmm. And I've shown some shorter versions of this. But I think emotionally, this is kind of what everybody has wanted to do. Yeah. I'm going to come over and make, a, oh, the make another little tree that's, that's prominent here, maybe. I'm, notice that right here, I go wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. That's sort of just creating a little shadow that my tree is going to grow out of. Uh, now, a lot of people are liking your forest better than their forest. Now, and, <laughs> now that, that's because you can edit where the trees go, though. That you have more control over that. I do, and I have kind of, I'm a, I'm a bit of a whimsical person. <laughs> yeah. So chances are that I'm, I'm just going to light brush like a little bit right there. And... I just want him to have some personality. He's talking to me. Hmm. Just if your tree talks to you, listen to it because it probably knows what it needs. Tree's like, I go here, yo. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. And this one could be like more, could be more of a straight arrow coming up. More of a straight arrow. But again, even as they come up, they need to have a, uh, when you get up here, you need to give them little branches. The thing, sometimes you'll see me coming back down and re-thickening my trunk. If at some point I ever accidentally over-thicken my trunk, guess mm -hmm. what? Whole tree's got to get bigger. <laughs> that's, that's how I correct for it. So if I end up with a slender tree that isn't slender, like up here at the top, now, as I'm coming up, I'm going to lighten my brush strokes and almost dry brush up into here because we have to be careful about how busy it gets. Just making little branches out this way. It's got a little wandering guy over here, maybe. This is a very branchy, branchy forest. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the branches, it won't feel like itself. Now I'm going to do some stuff coming in the center here with some of these, but I just want to get some stuff worked out here. So maybe he's got a little bit happening here and comes out here and wanders off over here. They're a hot mess. They're like twiggly bits. Twigglies. Now, I'm going to come and add a little more yellow so that the branch that I'm bringing in over here has a bit of more of a yellow cast in it as I bring it in. See what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Going to yellow cast some of the stuff. Maybe even fix that one and make it more yellow cast. Need more fluid. I don't have fluid. I can't make nice lines. That's pretty good. Mm hmm. All Those right. are your wonderful mid ground trees. Yeah, we're getting there. That, we need to have some friends. That hill really came into its own there. Yeah. Yeah, and the little fog thing is a fun touch. Yeah, that's uh, that was awesome. That <laughs> just sort of like totally made that background, mid-ground transition. It does. I really like it. My hat needs to stay on. All right. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to get a little more of my yellow-black mixture, like you do. Going to mist. So I've got some nice stuff. And I'm going to make sure that I've got some friends that are here. that are growing up as well. A little more black. Make sure I'm gonna put some little dark right under here, see? 
I'm down the hill. This is how I'm going to make sure that I keep uh, grounding my trees. Mm-hmm. Put a little shadow under them. So I just kind of, I try not to do straight lines. Because trees very rarely give me straight lines. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm actively layering. And contributing to the branchiness of everything. So by the time that red gets here, maybe even bring some of these dark orange branches now coming in, layering over. You don't have to have too many, but you gotta have some. From some trees or something that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. Maybe this branch breaks up and goes like that. Big branches sometimes do. Actively layering over the branches behind it. Yeah. Now you're okay. making them darker as they come forward. Yes. So as they come forward, everything gets darker. And as they move away. So there's two gradations. There's the background to forward. Lightest here, darkest forward. And there's a radial gradation that all my objects are impacted by. I see. So I'm just trying to pay attention to those things as I'm adding bits and pieces to the wood. You know, and as I'm filling it in, because that's what we're doing is we're filling in the wood. This little guy, I'm inclined to say that he's got another little, like trees do. You know how they do that thing where they grow that second, like, weird tree? Yeah. So that's how I'm growing that up. How is everybody feeling on the trees? Really good. This is this has been a really great demonstration, so that folks, you know, they're they're seeing how not to uh, to clone and how the 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 assembly of the foreground, middle ground, and background objects really comes together. Uh, and you know, as you were saying earlier, the different kinds of uh, of uh, uh, of radial and linear uh, gradations. Yep. Those are those are really obvious here and really helpful. They are, and they're in almost all landscape painting. There's usually two gradations in any landscape painting. Mm. And so really great landscape artists, and I am not at all saying I'm one of those, but I do listen to them, mm -hmm. um, will mark both gradations. Mm. So you'll see both of those actively somewhere in their canvas in some way. And that's certainly something I, I just... There's going to be a big thing there, but <laughs> just, I just completed it because I'm a completionist. You wanted some tree bit there. I wanted some tree bit there, my black and my yellow. So this, there's an interesting thing we're doing here called a mother color. A mother color? Which is the I'm, Indian yellow. I'm interested now. <laughs> What's a mother color? If I, if I remember this correctly, this is a unifying color that's mixed into almost everything in the canvas. So that anytime you put anything in it that doesn't have it, it pops. Oh, well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I don't think I've, I, I may have heard that before, but it's been a long time. But it's been a long time. Yeah. I think we need a, a, I think we need one kind of bending. Maybe I'll start here. And come up. And bend that way. See? Mm -hmm. He does something unexpected. He's leaning a different direction. This is also um, really exaggerating the keyhole of the painting, mm -hmm. which is sort of nice. And I'm making him visibly darker, so it's like easy to see that he's a different part of the forest. Yeah. Wandering a tree left. 
Maybe that one breaks up. ourselves a branch maybe coming from this side and the trick is, is I've just got to have enough fluidity in my paint to make the right hand turn across The branches are all now getting darker and becoming more prominent in our landscape. How's that doing? Oh, yeah, it's getting it's getting more and more. It's so fun. <laughs> I think, you know, we've got a couple things here, but I want to get one more. One more tree there. Yeah. Where I put in my big boys. I really want, because I left this open, I want to densify other parts of my forest. Mm -hmm. To make sure I have the same feeling. Throughout. So just every time I go forward, I'm just making sure things are just a little bit dark underneath it. Okay. I know you're not having a chance to see the chat, but everyone is saying how awesome this is. And they really appreciate the patience that you're showing to go through and show us how to do all these little trees and make so many little trees. A lot of little trees. But this it's okay. is a painting that begs to be speed paint. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at everybody. <laughs> it's like, all right, painting some trees here, some trees there. And, but you know what? Really not. Because you, taught, you, you talked a lot about like the different techniques and the, like there's a lot of stuff we covered here today. No, yeah, you can't cover everything in a demo. And we, but we really did this fast. I mean, we, we covered a lot of ground. I mean, we're, you know, we're only a minute, an hour, what, an hour and 10 in or something like that? Yeah, I predicted this. <laughs> yeah, hour and 20 in, something like that. So yeah. this, is, this is going great. And we've covered a lot of ground here, so. You know, I've got some really um, easy landscapes coming up. I, you know, like you can have, um, certainly over, um, starting on the, oh, the 26th, um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. here in the United States, I am having a, a lot more one hoots are going to be hitting the channel. Gotcha. Now they're all going to be live. Okay. Looking at that. Oh, it's getting there. Yeah. Patience. <laughs> now you're going in and adding some 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 ground detail there. Well, I'm just making sure, and then I got to put these two big boys up here, which are kind of a thing, and then I get to paint in red. Once I know what my landscape is, then I can paint red in. Yeah. So uh, so uh, Reda was curious if you're gonna if you're gonna paint in any like rocks or leaves or stuff on the ground. We're gonna. Loosely put in some leaves. Loosely wind. With hmm. little more defined strokes. So see, these strokes are all soft. So we'll do what's called a hard stroke. Mm -hmm. And that will create some focus. But I just need to know where red is before I decide where to put those. Oh, okay, cool. Making sure that I'm painted in. And there we go. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Let's come over here. Yep. Just making sure. I just don't want to have any gaps before I put my big boys in. You mean the outside framing? 
yeah, the outside framing trees really need to be kind of positioned. Now, there's this one little bit of stuff I've got to kind of do up here, but I'm going to do it once I do the big trees. So I got these two trees that are really framing this space, and they come up the sides, and they have these noticeable branches, and they're what create this very dramatic canvas. And at this point, I can get right into my fluid black. The one thing I'll say about this particular black is that it is shiny when it dries, and a lot of your painting will be matte, and then some of it will be shiny. So to fix that, you just varnish with matte, var uh, well, you varnish with two coats of gloss spray and then matte varnish. Matt. I, I have stuff on varnishing. Yeah, we got a couple of videos on We got that. a couple of videos. So don't panic about the varnishing. It's just that's how you unify it. No panicking. Like I'm going to do right now as I come up and, you know, paint this big, crazy tree that is on the side here. I think, you know, he's got a, he's got a little weird get that all in man now i don't do it on the show because you guys need to see you know how often i'm dipping in my paint and a bunch of information but were i painting this not for you guys i would have a little cup of paint here to do this work uh the reason i would do that is so i wouldn't become fatigued and stop before i was creatively happy hmm I could dip, draw, dip, draw. Oh, I see. I see. That makes sense. So sometimes I do things on my show that are a little different than I might do for myself. And that is because you guys need to see the action. I'm bringing this thicker branch here, and it's going to do all kinds of things. We paint these first structures in, right? And then um, we put in all the little details. So like he could have a pretty big branch that came out here and knotted. And then came up here. A little bump where it joins the tree and thicken it out and then And now you can see how you had to put in a bunch of little teeny tiny branches to make this work. Yeah, I get all those layers of, those cool layers of branches. Otherwise it just doesn't give you a tangled wood. And luckily I painted enough tangled woods to be okay even when the Photoshop image was a little bit cray cray. No, which brush are you using there? This is a number four round in my Art Sherpa brushes. A number four round. You okay. want a good round with a sharp point. No matter what the size of your round is, it should have its sharp point for your detail work. I'm just making sure that we've got a lot of, we're going to be coming up here with lots of little detaily bits, but I want to make some good structures. work from and that's what you want to have is good structures to be working from you will periodically even on a good brush need to rinse it out because the paint will start to dry on it mm -hmm. and it will mess you up another big tree Coming up here from the side, it wanders up and joins the tangle of the top of the forest. Take that over here. We're actually pretty close to being able to paint red in. Yeah? Yeah. It's not too bad. 
And again, this painting can be resized to a big canvas. It's just not really feasible to demo that on YouTube. Because, you know, we'd be here forever. Yeah. <laughs> Forevers. Uh, we do, we're doing pretty good here today. I think we are. Yeah, this is turning out really nice. We've had a nice little, a nice little time hanging out with everybody. And it's coming right together. Bring a little broken kind of interesting little branch here. You can see I'm always thicker at the trunk and then thinning on the way out. Starting to be the deal. It is. Little fiddly bits. Fiddly bits. Fiddly bits. I'm just going to give it some fiddly bits. Fiddly bits. <laughs> Helps to say fiddly bits. Little fiddly bits. Little lines. Little fiddles. Okay. Nice little cluster of branches coming over this way. I like to break the joint and wander. And you can see as we're making these darker branches that are here, it helps create this illusion of these corners being darker. I'm breaking another big boy over here. And that's a lot of what this artist did when he made this piece. And again, if you have trouble coming up with uh, tree branch ideas, the one nice thing about the reference photo is there's a lot, isn't there? Mm -hmm. You want to think about different ways you can paint tree branches. Well, the reference photo has tons of those. In the corners here, be sure to include lots of weird little tree branches in the corners so they can feel nice and dark. Yeah. Little fine lines of little tree branches that are happening here in the corners. You're still using that black. Yeah, this is this is like my friend for this. There's a kind of defined branch. So this is I'm gonna make sort of a defined thought out branch. Mm -hmm. It'll be sort of focal. Yeah. It crosses the space. It's kind of considered. And I think one last little hoorah right here that I'm feeling the balance. Got my hands have a nice light pressure. A low branch too. Little low branches. All right. I have nothing else to say about trees anymore. Huh. That's looking pretty good. Doesn't look bad. I like that. I mean, like just like that, that's a very nice keyhole forest. It looks really sharp. Probably if you painted this, you're already like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> Probably feeling like you really did something, and you did. You rocked it out. I'm going to put out a little of my cad red. I'm going to put out a little more of my Indian yellow. I've got some burnt umber and some burnt sienna here. 
And I'm going to make sure that I've got a couple, I start to have that feeling of forest floor. So I'm going to take a little of my cat red medium into my Indian yellow. I'm going to make an orange. And I'm going to take my burnt umber and mix that orange into it. Is that right there? Yeah. And I'm going to start dabbing. I'm just going to darken her once she's in. Gotcha. Dab, 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 dab. And the brightness is going to be focused in this area. Okay. Not only, only a little bit this way, only little kisses. Mostly it's just focused right here. Get maybe a little more Indian yellow and some white. That one just. Couple kisses of that right here. Too much of that. Go back and knock that back with a little of my brown. Tapping, tapping some leaves here. I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna and a smidge of my black. I'm going to come in and just break up, break up, break up. Dark her on the outside edge. And we're just tapping, tapping, tapping. Well, here you can be darker with that. Right here. Um, her burnt, regular burnt sienna, which is actually quite bright. You don't realize it's bright until you put it into a muted painting, and you're like, "This is a really bright paint." I'm going to grab some just Indian yellow, no white, no anything. And what I should start to have, some zinc. And, uh, oh, that's too much zinc. Hmm. It's too white. Too much zinc. Mm-hmm. just softening this see it just got a little white right there so this is that floor you were talking about that sort of just implied forest floor yeah we're just implying it only focused in this area right more of my burnt knock that back because I got crazy I'm just trying to keep this from being too bright, but it needs to be focal and bright. It's just little dashing strokes. More brighter here, more yellow in the center. That's where the light is. And just try to make it, there it goes. Submit. Now I'm mm -hmm. gonna freehand my red in. You guys are super welcome. To use the traceable. Oh, yeah. But I got to dry this to do that because I'm going to be way on this thing. Okay. Let's see here. And there we go. So, hey, guys. Thanks for coming out and hanging out with us today. The, <laughs> I almost go automatically into that, don't I now? But it's true. Uh, really appreciate everyone coming out and hanging out with us. Um, as you know, it's it had a big crowd and you guys have been really enjoying chat as I have been just really enjoying chatting with you guys and watching out here. Um, love to encourage all the people who haven't made it to a chat to try to come out and join us here. Uh, it's something that um, it's really kind of an interesting special uh, experience. We, I can't say that all the chat topics always go exactly with what we're doing on the show, but they are always entertaining. It was uh, always entertaining. What was that? It was always entertaining. Oh, our chat. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to get some of my yellowed gray again and a little of my zinc white because I just want to make sure that my fogs. 
trying to find a very light color. If you could push your canvas up just a touch there. Oh, yeah, it goes right off the thing. It it's, happens You know what it is? Sometimes. I brush into it and it pulls <laughs> yeah. to me. I'm going to just make sure. Now I've got this sort of like yellow, soft, edged fog that kind of encroaches right here. Can you see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. I'm softening this edge. And just a couple places where the light's... Get a little more of my zinc on there. Yeah. Just making sure that it's just too white. <laughs> too much. The wonderful thing about zinc is unlike titanium, see, it just goes away. <laughs> if it gets too much for you, you can just easily, easily. It's it's a lot of times why it's everybody's favorite tool for clouds. Mm -hmm. Because it just gives you that cloud thing super easily. I'm just making sure we've got some forest mist like you get. Maybe that's a little misted and a little mist there, so none of it's really that bright. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Fiddling is just impossible for me not to do. So I put out some red, right? And I'm going to first, maybe I'm going to, is my palette knife over here? I'm going to take a little of my black and mix it into my red. Now, I wholly would not suggest, unless you're super confident in your freehanding, mm -hmm. to do this. Um, draw it in with chalk, or draw it in with, you know, chalk pencil, just anything. So that way, if you've got a mistake, you're not like feeling it. And I can even just real quick say, you know, you know, you can know that the red is gonna be like, kind of right here. In our in our mid ground where our light is focused, she's going to be not that tall actually, because the force should be overwhelming. So I know she's kind of being those sort of constraints, and she's got her little hood, which is sort of pointed. I'm gonna just sketch that in, because I'm a crazy person. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> I'll get the chalk off with a... You know what I need? No idea. My glasses. Like, why does this hurt my eyes? Oh, well, there you go. You can, you can see it now? You can see it now. So I'm starting with this grayed red. That way, when I paint the cloak, I've got my... I've got at least a basis of a mid-tone low light in there. And then I can easily, easily... Add a highlight. I gotta get this basis in. So she's got little shoulders. They come a little bit past her hood. I'm gonna arc those right here. And she's got a waist. So I know that her waist is about a head length down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I know where to put it. I just kind of eyesight about a head's worth. And then make a tapered shape. Paper it down to her waist. Making sure her shoulders are visible. Just adjusting this. Uh, bring the cape out a little more exaggeratedly. Because I might have her cape flowing a little bit. She might be more in a run, red, run kind of thing. I'll have to see how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm just sketching her in. This first layer comes here. Bring it back. Second layer. And then I'm going to start flailing that back a little bit because I want a cape in action. A little, this is pleated, so I'm trying to draw the little pleats out. No. It's a little shelf, and then I need a longer shelf right here. Now, if you've done yesterday's painting, this would be super easy. This is so much easier than yesterday's <laughs> painting. Or, so, if you've done yesterday's, then this would be a breeze. Or, if you're warming up to doing... This the, would be the easy version of yesterday's yeah. painting. 
<laughs> or this would be a one breeze. red. There's not too many wrinkles. So Cassie was curious. It you know uh, this is again more of a, just sort of an abstract Sherpa question. Mm-hmm. Of all the paintings you've done here on YouTube, which one's been uh, your your most favorite to do? So actually, uh, yesterday's painting so far. It used to be a different painting, but yesterday's painting took the front spot. I loved doing that. It was a lot that of fun. That was just a joy for me. Yeah. I really, really, I've been kind of enjoying, we're going to keep doing one hoots, right? Because you've got to give people a way in. Mm -hmm. But I've been enjoying doing these more involved projects. Um, I'm actually trying to make sure I create things that, you know, I would even personally want to paint. Just because it's just joyful. So yeah. okay. I like the I like the motion of that figure. It's looking good. Ooh, Ooh, she's looking she's looking fly. Yeah. She's in motion. And we'll just make sure that she's if you ever want to know where do you stick your elbow, your elbow always bends the waist. Hmm. Yeah, well Yes, that's well. good to know. Very useful to know. Yeah, if you're just kind of putting in a small figure in a painting. So, you know, before yesterday, what was your favorite painting? Um, it, it was the Arcadia National Park with the guy and his dog. Oh, yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> really love the painting. Not my most popular, interestingly enough. So weird. It should be. So while she's drying, I'm going to get this kind of bristly brush. Oh, yeah. What size I'm is going that? To, this is a number four Cambridge. It's a mix of synthetic filament and bristles, so it doesn't soften even as it, as it gets uh, a little bit wet. And I'm going to take a little of my burnt umber and my black, and I'm going to get some glaze. So it's a little transparent. I'm right under her. I'm going to make sure, like I've been doing it under my trees, I'm going to make sure that these trees are shadowed. That we have a little shadow here. Okay. I'll dapple that off. Yeah. So that she's not, you know, and then I'll get just a little bit of my deeper black and just go right under her, just a titch. Not through the whole shadow, just a little bit under her. So that she's very deeply seated. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. And let's get the rest of this chalk off. Let's take this. Oh, they're used for cloud brush. <laughs> they're removal <laughs> chalk. <laughs> Very useful. I'm going to get a small shader, and I'm going to start putting in some shadows, and then I'm going to put in some highlights. So I'm going to take a little black. I'm going to mix a smidge of red to it. So for the, it's got a red hue, but it's going to be our our deepest shadow in the coat. And right underneath the hood, I'm going to tap a little shadow right across her shoulders. And pull back a little, a little creasing on the hood. I'm just going to be putting in teeny tiny little shadows, like you do. And right underneath. You know, along the seam here and under the armpit. Pull that back a bit. Shading up. You're just soft brushing up. Yep. And then on the back side of this arm, a little bit. Right? Soft brush this up. You want the mid-tone to show there. Because we want this to be tailored. This crease is going to be a little more in shadow. I even come a little bit under this arm. A little shadow right here. Bring one up the skirt. Another one up the skirt. Because we're starting to give it some motion, saying it's it's flowing. Now, 
Carolyn was asking here. There we go. Do you always do shadows before highlights? Is there a reason for doing them in that order? Um, uh, there, there are a few, but for me personally, I have an easier time defining my shadow ranges. And sometimes it can be harder to see the highlights. Hmm. So you could go in the other order if you were... You could, though acrylics really paint quite well um, darkest to lightest. So I've got my Pure CAD, which is pretty powerful oh. stuff. And so I'm going to tap in a little bit of her hood. I'm going to go right across her shoulders here. Pull that down. Cat's like, I want that cloak. I want this cloak. It was a very good cloak. It's a very good cloak. A little bit on the outside edge of her arms. A little bit on this flare of this pure cat. Although, although I think I would have to have a a cloak in that that sunburst orange you know the one i'm talking about yes because that would be cool i don't know that i could pull off red i'm just trying to make sure red is red julie thinks you you need to have a, a seamstress put together some of these designs here i have heard that is an interesting idea <laughs> well, well we'll have to find we'll have to find ourselves a uh uh, a a student of the fashion world to help. Uh, well, I mean, we have friends. It's true. Well, we've done it. Really? Mm -hmm. That's fast. Wow. Wow. That was just that came right together. Just bang, bang, bang. She's just in there. Wow. She's just in there. Let me sign it. Yes, for sure. Somewhere. Somewhere, Somewhere. over there. In the in the tree. So this Are you is sure your detail brushes are rinsing completely clean because they have a tendency to hold paint when you don't want them to, and it wears them out quicker. I'm gonna grab a little of my neon yellow and my black. So this is red at, at, at bravely adventuring into the forest. Yes. And this has been really nice. This is this actually came together really fast. I was actually pretty happy with this. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect timing. Just signing this in a very grayed color so it doesn't take over the whole composition. Mm -hmm. Oh, lots of lovely praise from everyone out here in the community. They're saying this is just wonderful. So she's a pretty thing. Yeah. She is a pretty, pretty thing. I'm so glad to have gotten to show you this today. I think this was something you guys have asked a lot of questions about, and you've been really curious about how to paint. All, look at me, I'm all disheveled. How to paint a lot of, look like I've been running through the forest. Uh, how to paint a lot of trees. Um, and I think we kind of covered how you might do that. And you can take this even further. You can get even more intense with this. You know, you've got time. You can hold your little paint. Here are you going, I'm going to just do this forever. Yes. It's, it is actually, this particular type of work does lower your blood pressure. Does Well, I mean, once you relax into the fact that you can paint trees, it lowers your blood pressure. <laughs> but it can help you relax, and it's one of my favorites. And I think this is, I love this piece. I love this. Everyone's really enjoyed seeing this and hanging out, and it's been very relaxing to watch. I have to say, just personally, I have had a very relaxing time hanging out here with the community, chatting, and just watching this. So thank you guys for making my day more pleasant. I loved having you here. I'm going to see you guys. Uh, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'm going to see you with the easel really soon. Bye-bye.